Ryzen 5 2600, Ryzen 5 5600X, Ryzen 7 5800X, Ryzen 9 5900X. There's so many AMD CPUs out there. Which one is the best for streaming? Today, we're gonna to find out. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and this is the first video of 2021. Very excited, I know I've been gone for a little while now, but basically we're going to be testing out four different CPUs, as you already know based on the title of this video, and we're gonna be finding out which one is the best for streaming, in my opinion. Um, if you like this video and you found it helpful, chuck it a like, get subscribed, and uh, let's begin. Okay, so basically the objective of this video is to essentially show you guys which CPU from AMD you should be thinking about or choosing if you are wanting to get an AMD CPU upgrade or maybe you're planning your first build with AMD and you're gonna be specifically focusing on gaming. And I think there are so many different options out there right now. It's kind of hard to know I guess without something like this video to sort of help you and guide you on which one to buy. So my original CPU that I've been using for a long time was a Ryzen 5 2600, six cores, 12 threads. Did the job, but my CPU utilization was always hovering around 80 or 90% when gaming and streaming um, quite intensive games like Call of Duty Warzone, which is a very popular game on Twitch right now. Um, and I actually got some other CPUs to review and to check out. So we got the 5600X, the 5800X, um, which are again, six core, 12 threads or eight core, 16 thread CPUs. And then I placed an order myself because I knew what I wanted um, just for that longevity. I got the 5900X, which took about four months to arrive, which is um, 12 cores, 24 threads. So it's literally doubling what I previously had, which um, I think is going to last me quite some time. But I'm also aware it's quite expensive and it is a bit of overkill maybe for um, a lot of you out there. $1,000 on a CPU nearly um, compared to something like the 5600X, which is about half the price. Um, you know, do you need to go all the way up? That was, I think, a question that I was thinking about when I was making this video for you guys. So essentially, like I said, we're just trying to well, I'm just trying to show you and clarify which one you should be thinking about if you're going to be streaming. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through my streaming setup so you can see the camera, the monitors, the settings, the hardware, all of that stuff so you know what actually my streaming setup looks like. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll jump into the graph so that way you get to actually see the results that I got with testing these four different AMD CPUs. So then you know which one to go out and actually buy. Okay, so let me take you through a bit about my streaming setup, um, talk about some of the hardware and some of the settings I use before we jump into those graphs. So first things first, the camera is a Sony A7S II DSLR camera, which is currently capturing footage at 4K resolution, 30 frames per second. So I'll spin it around so you can see on the camera, it's got 4K 25p, which is basically 30 frames a second there. You can see my hand there as well. Um, so it's all happening right now. And that then feeds into a capture card, uh, which then goes into the PC. And then on here, we've got my 4K 27 inch uh, LG monitor. Um, this is a, I think, 4K 60 Hertz. Um, had to think there for a second. And then we've got obviously OBS running. We've got task manager open. And then we've got the game itself running on the ViewSonic 27 inch 144Hz 1440p. So let's just quickly go back through. 4K on the camera, so 4K 30, which then feeds into the computer. And then you can obviously see my face in Streamlabs there. Um, if we go into the Pango section here, you can see we've got the camera, Pango 4K grabber, 3840, 30 frames. So press done, go down into the settings, go into video, one second. So the resolution is obviously 1440 for the, the game. And then the output is 1080 and then 60 frames a second. So we're gonna press done. You can see there the utilization on the 5900X is roughly 35%. Graphics is obviously the 2070 Super. We'll jump back into the game move it around, it's all happening in real time. This is basically what it would look like if I was to be streaming. Obviously you've got you know the microphone headphones here, which is what you're seeing there as well. So this is all exactly as is when I'm actually streaming. 
Um, just to give you guys a bit of, I guess, behind the scenes, but also just to show you what my setup is. Um, and now what we'll do is we'll jump over to the graph so you can figure out which AMD Ryzen CPU is best. Okay, so what you can see here on the screen is obviously the results from me gaming, playing Call of Duty Warzone at 1440p while streaming to Twitch at 1080p60 using the NVIDIA Strix 2070 Super and the NVENC encoder. Going from the 2600 to the 5900X for me personally has been absolutely amazing to see that huge reduction in CPU usage while still gaining almost an extra 20 frames per second is just awesome, but obviously it is a very expensive CPU and that's what you expect. If you're looking at picking up a CPU for streaming and gaming, even though it's a CPU which gets left on the shelf and I think it might be a bit of an unpopular opinion, I think the 5800X is actually still a really solid buy. It's a hundred and something dollars less than the 5900. You get the same performance, only a little bit higher CPU usage. Obviously it doesn't have as many cores and threads, but overall it is still a really, really solid CPU. So I think for me the takeaway is if you were looking at either the 5600 or the 5800, I'd be going the 5800 because that performance difference is night and day different. 80 to 92 frames um, at this resolution is just awesome. It's possibly going to be more or um, greater depending on the game that you're playing. The 5900X, I wouldn't necessarily recommend for everyone unless you're planning on keeping this CPU for maybe three, four, maybe five years. And um, 2600, I mean, still does a really, really good job. Definitely going to be fine considering the kind of workload that I put under it. Um, but I wouldn't be looking at getting one brand new. Maybe you could get it as a second build for a friend or something like that if you see one cheap. Um, that's not going to be doing too much streaming because it will definitely get pushed um, quite a bit in those kind of workloads. So I know, again, it's an unpopular opinion, but I think the 5800X is actually a really good buy and maybe too many people are sort of sleeping on that one. So let me know what you guys think, but um, definitely some interesting results. Okay, so here's the TLDR. Basically, if I was gonna be buying a CPU today for gaming and streaming, want to have a bit of longevity with it as well, the 5800X is going to be a sure bet. You won't lose, you won't feel like you're missing out with that particular CPU. You're gonna be getting the best of both worlds in terms of CPU utilization and performance. I got the 5900X just because I wanted a bit more longevity. So that's, that's basically the TLDR. Okay guys, so if you want to debate anything about this video with me, you can chat to me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash social hardware. I'm there every Friday night at 10.30 p.m. approximately. Um, I'm also on Instagram, social hardware official. I'll leave links to that all down in the description. Um, again, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been a part of this community and helped grow this community. I am very appreciative to be, or very thankful really, to be in this position to make videos for you guys. I'm enjoying it a lot and I can't wait to see um, what this year brings. So um, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.